Hey Strong People, Kale Beck here, and this podcast is brought to you by StartingStrongMan.com. Of course, just uh, your source for everything Strongman. Training, coaching, it's all there. Uh, this week we'll be talking to Alex Viata. Alex Viata uh, is started Complete Human Performance and wrote the book The Hybrid Athlete, which is available on JTSStrength.com. A uh, good way to put it is concurrent training, where you're training to be good at just running and endurance and also strong and all that stuff. Um, you probably know about Alex. You know, he's kind of Facebook famous and all that. And, uh, of course, I'm also a complete human performance coach. So if you are interested in this type of thing, you can go to completehumanperformance.com and uh fill out the coaching inquiry uh you could be matched up with me or someone else that might fit the bill better of course go to completehumanperformance.com and follow them on instagram facebook all that at complete human performance there's also the complete human performance podcast um which has members of the complete human performance team talking about actual stuff uh alex and i more talk about uh, we talk about running a business, uh, you know, your goals changing, if uh, he ever plans to do a strongman contest, interesting stuff like that, uh, and uh, how you can add some more, uh, for lack of a better word, you know, cardio into your training to make you a better athlete at strongman. So how a little bit of running or walking can help a lot and uh, some of the reasons behind it and how to do it. Uh, talk about that also. Go to store.startingstrongman.com. Going to have some sales going. Got our holiday gift guide out. Uh, if you want, you know, some new sleeves, some tacky lifting straps, figure eights, all of that is available at store.startingstrongman.com. And also just released our new strongman training templates. Go to strongmanprogram.com to check those out. It's just $10 a month. You get workouts every week delivered right to your phone through an app. And it also includes a 15-page guide on performing the movements with step-by-step instruction and a lot of my thoughts on that. I thought I'd include that even though it's part of something else. Um, it's a rough draft, but it's very helpful. I think uh, that's worth the $10 right there. Just uh, having you know a clear-cut guide. They're pretty detailed. I, I kind of go into it a lot on, you know, like Farmer's Walk, Log Clean Press, Continental Clean, Tire Flip, Atlas Stones, all of the, you know, common, uh, you know, strongman movements, you know, yoke, all of that. So strongmanprogram.com, get signed up, includes access to a forum for support, uh, help you with the training, and, uh, you know, guide to how to do it without implements. It's all going to be right there and you'll have your workouts populated in a calendar. This is not the same as one-on-one coaching where we are working towards a specific goal. You could, of course, sign up for that at strongmancoach.com. This is if you just want some guide to how to train for strongman and get better, you know, and develop all the skills needed to be a complete strongman um, athlete or just enjoy that style of training what these templates are for it's a if you need to ask a lot of questions and need one-on-one coaching and are working towards a very specific goal then you definitely want to stick with the one-on-one coaching but yeah check it out strongmanprogram.com get signed up and uh, we'll get this going and it's a you know good start for the year it's at ten dollars right now and it's going to go up to 15 in the new year after um, it'll be ten dollars through january and then it'll go up to $15 a month. But still, I feel like it's very affordable and will help a lot of people reach their goals. And of course, if you want one-on-one coaching, you can uh, go to completehumanperformance.com, as mentioned um, before. And you know, you want something that you, you maybe want to get be good at more than just strongman. You want to train for a couple sports at one time, then that's I always direct people there because you can work with multiple coaches. It's pretty cool and it's a great company. And I'm glad to play a small part, be uh, you know, a small part in doing some of the strongman coaching for him. Um, what's going on in strongman? We had the ultimate strongman world championships this weekend, which was put on by Glenn Ross. And it looked like a really cool show. It was almost like a look had a very like WWE feel. Had laser shows. There's like lights and lasers and big over the top uh, athlete introductions. And there was a lot of uh, very qualified 
uh, you know, some of the best in the world there. There's Lawrence Chalet, Zadruna Savickas, uh, you know, uh, just a whole slew of top athletes, Eddie Hall, Terry Hollins. And uh, there's I, Lawrence Chalet looked huge. He ended up winning uh, the whole thing, followed Gregor Szymanski, got second, and Mikhail Shivlikov got third, who is, he was, he's been competing everywhere. He was just in Texas. I saw him, I think it was about a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago. But anyways, turned right around and got third at this contest. And what was it was unfortunate, it seemed like Eddie Hall pulled out after the first event, which the yoke, which he said was not a serious injury, but an injury nonetheless and not something he wanted to make worse, I'd assume, and keep pressing on throughout the day. Uh, the, the other big story from that contest was that Zadruna Civic has got seventh. And of course, we have the new Lindsay, you know, where the Zadruna Civic is basically looks like a bodybuilder now. Very big one, very stout one. But um, and people are like, oh, you know, he's not doing with the, good with the weight cut. He's done now. He's 41. And I think it's pretty rude to count out uh, who I consider the strongest man of all time after one contest. Uh, I think Graham Hicks put a great post on on Facebook about this saying that at least, you know, basically at least Zadrunas has the balls to show up people, you know, they bought tickets to see this show. Even if he's not at 100 percent, he's battling and coming back from a lot of injuries and kind of testing, seeing what needs, you know, testing this one out, uh, knowing he's probably not going to be in the contention because he's not 100 percent. I think I saw him do like a 400 kilo deadlift or maybe a little less in it. And, you know, it didn't look great, but you, but he's coming back from like some neck and, and back issues and like, you know, with nerve damage and all that. I'm not 100% certain on the um, extent of the injuries, but of course he also sat out World's Strongest Man this year. But I think at least he showed up. The fans, even if he got sev- seventh, you pay tickets. He says he's going to be there. Lots of other athletes do this, and then they're they don't want they don't want to come into a contest not a hundred percent, and then have people talk. Oh, he got seventh, um, but Z still showed up, did his obligation uh, for the show. Fans were happy to see him there, who paid the money to see the likes of him, even uh, if he's not uh, what you expect or a hundred percent. So you have to. You have to applaud him for that, and uh, it'll probably show him what he needs to work on and how far he is, how far out he is. He's a great athlete. You can't count someone like that out. It's just you can't dismiss twenty years of being one of the strongest people in the world in you know multiple disciplines over one show. If uh, you know by you know in two thousand seventeen, if he shows up to Worlds and gets seventh, then you can probably have that talk. But I, I think it's a little premature. Uh, when this is just a contest, you know, just coming back, seeing where everything is and how far he needs to progress and work back from here. Well, thanks for hearing me rant. Let's talk to Alex. And of course, go to amazon.startingstrongman.com. Use our affiliate links. I really appreciate everyone who's doing their uh, shopping at, you know, startingstrongman.com slash sponsors. Check everyone out. And of course, Uh, Keep listening and uh, give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Check out my talk with Alex Viata of CompleteHumanPerformance.com. Welcome to the Strong Talk Podcast. I am Kale Beck, joined by Alex Viata. Alex, how are you doing today? Good, man. Great. Thanks for having me back. It's been a while. Yeah. it's. uh, I I put up on like Snapchat that I'm like, oh, I'm going to be interviewing Alex uh, Viata today. I, I don't know who he is. And people are like, oh. I've been waiting for you to interview. I'm like, well, I did it like two years ago, but <laughs> yeah, things have changed a lot since then. I Snapchat. I, I keep meaning to do something with Snapchat, by the way. Eh, I, I don't I'm think so. It's... No, no, not social media savvy I, at all. I, you know, if, uh, if, if I go down this road, we'll probably end up spending the whole hour talking like this, but I really envy like, uh, the strength coaches and stuff that don't have any social media presence, but have a ton right. of clients and all that (laughs) like there's they're they're out there and i talk to those people and they're smart and you know they've just they're like nah i don't need to do any of that stuff you do a good job of it where you pretty much only do facebook for the most part yeah 
Yeah, you know, because I think that's a that's a format that kind of lets me it, it almost lets me feel discussion more than anything else, sure. which is kind of what I enjoy. You know, I like being able to throw out a topic and have people come in and chime in and contribute. And you know, a lot of the a, a lot of the rest of the stuff, you know, I, I just started with the Instagram, and somebody convinced me to download Snapchat. A lot of that is actually, you know, I can see that becoming a big thing for events in the future. Yeah, like you know, you're hosting events, and it would be great to be able to, you know, kind of on Snapchat show the regular updates. I'm sure people do this, mm-hmm. but um, you know, like right right now for me, it's just a, almost more of a, a, a platform to uh, to host uh, forums with people. Yeah, you just. You get a wax poetic about all these things and get it get it shared all the time. That it, it works yeah. out. You do a good job of it. Uh, <laughs> but for the people that are unaware, I think the last time we entered you as the guy that lifts pretty heavy and runs really far. And uh, yep, it's so that that's pretty much what you know. That's pretty much what you did. And then you started a <laughs> complete human performance. Like you know, there was the. Oh, you said it was like what a seven hundred ish squat and a, a under close to four minute mile or or what? Was yeah, that? it was a, it, it was a sub five. It was a four thirty two yeah. on a track was my best after uh-huh. God. What was that about six years worth of training? So yeah, that. But the funny thing is, complete human performance actually started long before that. Right. Um, I started complete human performance back in what was it two thousand twelve at this point. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was the kind of thing where my training was always just kind of done on the side. You know, we started with a couple of uh, in-person clients. Uh, we started with a bunch of online clients. Actually, when we started, uh, the first clients we had were um, all uh, athletes with disabilities. Uh, that was actually our original population that we worked with. And what was interesting and how this led into a lot of those other events, what got me into endurance sports at all back in, I think, 2006 or 2007, I got running a 5K again, was um, going to a lot of these events like the, you know, the triathlons, the fundraisers and the marathons with a lot of uh, disabled athletes. And, um, you know, just finally said, hey, yeah, you know, it'd be interesting to participate with some of them. So that's that's kind of how the whole the whole theory started. So before before that, were you just mainly doing strength training with less of like the longer endurance stuff? Yeah, no. Um, well, so first of all, back in back in high school, I was uh, you know did pretty much every sport my parents could throw me at just to get me out of the house. Um, high school, I did football, I did track, um, I did everything from the four hundred to the mile in high school, and um, you know kind of hit a lull after that. But uh, when I graduated college in two thousand two, God, that sounds like a long time ago. Uh, I started back in lifting, and for the next six years, did nothing but lift. So. It was, um, you know, that after that it was, uh, you know, let's 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 try out this whole running thing and see how it goes. Got myself a uh, got myself a track coach for the mile, and that was it. Right on, yeah. And then just uh, you know kept progressing. Then you uh, did stuff of which became internet lore. And like I said, now I think you squatted a thousand pounds and ran a, a three minute mile, and it just keeps increasing and increasing yeah. like that. <laughs> It's a great game of telephone. You never know exactly what you'll have done until uh, until you scour around the internet. Yeah, you know, it's 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 all in good fun. Um, you know, it's uh, some of the stuff is internet lore. It's uh, sometimes even I forget what it is. But um, you know, I uh, you know what I what I pride myself right now on is the the ultra distance stuff. You know, I've done a couple of uh, fifty mile runs. A um, couple of Ironmans, but um, at this point, I'm starting to think that the the clients we've ended up training are kind of kicking my butt in terms of, you know, what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a great point, and I think it's a it's an interesting point where when I interviewed you on American Strongman Radio two years ago, all of all of the talk was, you know, the you know being able to squat a lot and you know run pretty fast and stuff. And now it's just more like, Oh yeah, complete human performance. They coach people, which Mm -hmm. as you know, that's your business. It's a good distinction where less and less of it's on your own accomplishments and then what you're able to produce. So, well, you know, because I, I think so much of this, you, you know, I know you and I have talked about, uh, you know, what it takes to be a coach and everything else. Uh, you know, so much of, uh, of coaching and actually being able to speak to people is saying, okay, I know what works for me. That yeah. could be a fluke. It could be a flash in the pan. I had coaches myself, so I may not have learned a damn thing from them. So, you know, over the last few years, being able to translate it to other people, um, being able to show that this isn't just a, this isn't just a fluke. You know, I'm not anything special. It's, you know, if, if anything, it's, you know, the the ideas and the and the inspiration that's, you know, since really allowed other people to do, you know, what used to be kind of an aberration, and now it almost seems standard. Absolutely, yeah. It's just like everyone's, you know, what 
like I think I shared a video from what was it like 2012 nationals I did and it was like a 240 stone for reps and I got third and I was like man like that that's what the women that's like what the middleweight women that weigh like the same as I do are doing for more reps without tacky now yeah. so yeah I'm like yeah, I, no. I thought I was cool I thought I was really good but like were we just not training as hard like everyone just gets better I don't I don't know what it is I don't yeah, I thought know, I was they, training they, hard <laughs> It's, exactly, you know, you know, because I, I think back and I'm like, wow, you know, I used to be, you know, I, I thought here I am, you know, I'm a, a, you know, a little bit of ego creeps in. You think, my God, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. doing something that's really freakish, and then, uh, you know, I look around now, I realize how many other people are doing this, and it's, uh, it's both a little bit humbling, but also really, really cool. Um, you know, it's because at this point, I learn every time somebody goes out and you know and starts setting their sights on ridiculousness, you know, I get to. Uh, I get to kind of tag along for the ride, see what they're doing and, you know, kind of uh, feed off it. Yeah, absolutely. So going into, uh, how complete human performance got started, what, what were you doing before that? Did you have just a, a normal job or, or you just go straight from school and, you know, from your college into coaching people? Yeah, no, actually very normal job. Um, when I graduated from school, 2002, I, uh, uh, basically, my first real job was working in pharma, uh, working in clinical research for a number of years, and then uh, healthcare consulting pretty briefly. So, um, you know, it seems like an odd switch, but it's been interesting how much the uh, the work in clinical research. Well, first of all, you know, working uh, working for another company, working for someone else is, I, I think it's mandatory that you be able to work for someone else before you can work for yourself. Because it just it teaches you a lot. I mean, you know, there are certainly exceptions, but it teaches you a lot about you know work ethic and realize that okay, you know, now I don't have one boss. I have you know 500 bosses who all happen to be my clients. Right. And um, also being able to look at like clinical research and everything else, it really made it easy to you know kind of cut through a lot of the a lot of the garbage out there. Uh, you know, in this field and being able to look at things with a critical eye and actually read the stuff. You know, read the citations that people are coming up with. Yeah, it never hurts to kind of get that background while someone's paying you to do so as well. Exactly. It if you exactly. can do that, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, yeah, it's a good point where you say uh, it's good to learn how to work for someone else before you can. Cause yeah, I don't know if cause I think about that a lot because a lot of the time I think like I wasted time. And then other times I think like, well, if I try to do you know, like start my own company like I did when I was, you know, 25, I don't, or, you know, in my early twenties, I don't know if it would have worked out right. Like I, I really yeah. don't like, that's kind of how things work. You'd like yeah. to think like I would, but I was, you know, you are a different person at different stages and you learn as you go. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you know, because it's, you know, a lot of people I think are, you know, who are, especially people who are really passionate about sports or passionate about their pastime or their hobby or anything else thinks, oh man, I, you know, I want to make a living out of it. But, um, it's, it's, it's really not that easy. There's so much more to it than you think. And you know, I mean, you know, you probably spend half your time doing administrative stuff and answering emails and customer service and, you know, things that have nothing to do with strongman itself. No. And, uh, you know, all that stuff, being able to, being able to, you know, kind of bite your, you know, bite down and, uh, you know, do the, do the really boring crap. That's, you know, that's, that's a learned skill. And I think being able to, you know, write a good proper email and learn customer service and all that, that's, that's something you get from working for someone else. And it, it's hugely helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, uh, what, what did I do today? I had to talk to webmaster about switching over from, an HTTP to an HTTPS so my app could still work and <laughs> it's going to be this much more money a month and it, then, you know, they're not going to process payments through the thing unless you're, you know, the secure, I'm like, okay, yeah. like that's what, you know, like that's, that has nothing this to do with strong man. This is what I spent man. my day doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was the, that was part of the morning. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's, it has, running a business like that, it has very little to do with actually the coaching the clients and yep. all that. So basically just, uh, for the people that don't know, you know, CHP complete human performance. Uh, I think the easiest way for myself when I try to describe it is, uh, it's concurrent training. You're just, mm -hmm. you're training to be, to do multiple things basically. Yep. Yep. But so like if someone wants to, you know, run a 5k and do a strongman contest, 
you know, we have people that can, can help you. You have people that can help you do that or yourself or et cetera. But you, yeah, go ahead. I think, uh, one of the things with that, you know, we talked about earlier is that, you know, what happens is, is when you provide a good product and you're getting people results is you're going to get more than, uh, just like that niche, like it's good to start in a niche. Like I started, you know, I started in strongman, which is a niche. There wasn't a huge uh, amount of like websites that are doing any sort of content for that. Um, there's not too many people that are, you know, doing what you're doing with concurrent training beforehand. But then when you provide a good enough product, people are like, Oh, well, I'm just going to, you know, I just want, all I want to do is powerlifting. So, right. so like go through the stages of like how, the business has evolved from just, you know, being very niche to being a lot more broad and, you know, encompassing a lot more at this point. Yeah. You know, cause the, the biggest thing for us is obviously, you know, my, my area, you know, my background with strength sports and, you know, anatomy physiology. So, you know, I had my niche, but I suddenly realized that we were getting people that were coming to us that were, you know, very accomplished power lifters or great triathletes, people like that. And I said, you know what, my, my experience in your sport is not in depth enough to actually coach you at the level I'd like to coach you at. Sure. Um, you know, cause we get a lot of power lifters who would come to us and say, you know, like, Hey, you know, I, I'm at this level and I've been competing for X number of years. And, uh, you know, they themselves would be coaches and a lot of them say, you know what, I just want to work on my conditioning a little bit. I'm tired of being you know, out of breath all the time, you know, and I think I, I can help you with that part, but with regards to the rest of the programming, what am I going to do? So what we started doing is bringing on uh, coaches who have kind of in-depth expertise in their own specific areas. Mm-hmm. So we'll bring on somebody who comes from just a powerlifting background. Like we got someone like, you know, Jen Rotzinger, who's helping with our powerlifting and, you know, Jordan Wong and then people like that because they know their sports so well that what we do is we say, look, you know, you can work with the, the power lifters who come on board and use our basic methodology to provide, you know, that, that five or 10% of the other side of the spectrum. You know, I'll work with the 50, 50% athletes. I want to do some lifting. I want to do some five Ks. They can work with the, you know, 90, 10 athletes. And, um, I think what's, uh, what's, you know, really cool about that is that, the it's the same methodologies that do both because it's all you know everything about the concurrent training is really a kind of a cost benefit analysis sure Um, you look at what your training absolutely needs and you see how much additional work you can get away with before it starts to compromise your main sport and everything that we did when we started developing the whole hybrid methodology which is you know what i i started doing um you know through trial and error mostly error uh (laughs) a lot of error was saying, okay, how much can I add? What are the warning signs to look for? You know, what, uh, what is, what is junk mileage? What is additional work? What is helpful work? What can you recover from? How do you recover from this mentally, physically, neurologically? And, um, having that as kind of a, a background framework that we have all our coaches kind of understand is how each one of us can, you know, work with anyone from a generalist to a specialist who just wants a little bit of exposure to the other side for health. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a good way to put it where you say you're working with more of the someone's 50, 50 versus 90, 10, that, that sums it up yeah. pretty good where, yep. you know, someone just wants to add a, a, a little bit on top. And, uh, it's a good distinction to make where the, the cost benefit analysis where mm-hmm. like, you know, when you, you sometimes less is more a lot of the time, like, uh, yep. I've found even just with my exclusive strongman athletes, we've moved their strength training days down to three, especially closer to a contest. And especially if they're, um, either older or more advanced, because you know, it takes longer to recover from more poundage, obviously. Uh, So like, and you know, it's hard and people like, Oh, I was working out, you know, I was working out five days and then it's like, no, now we're recovering. Actually, uh, Nick best said that, you know, he trains three days a week when I did a podcast with him. He's like, I train Wednesday and I trace Saturday and Sunday because those are his days off. Yeah. And he's doing well and he's, you know, almost, he's yeah. 47 and one of the strongest yeah. dudes in the world. So it's, it's a good, yeah. yeah, it's a great point to make. Just, you know, just getting rid of the, the fluff. You know, and there is so much fluff. And I think yeah. that's, it is such an easy trap to fall into. And, you know, I think it's hard because, you know, one of the things I realized looking around is that there are so many new, newly minted experts. And, I, you know, I don't even mean that sarcastically. I mean, as a field, it's growing. And you've actually got a lot of people out there who are worth listening to. You know, they have good ideas. They have, you know, they've done a lot more in depth. You know, sports science programs are exploding. You have people coming out of nowhere who are just full of great information. 
But the problem is so much of that is so focused that it's easy to take it out of context. You have a lot of people who do like bodybuilding work talking about, you know, here's the adequate volume and this and that and the other. And, you know, you have a lot of their higher volume and higher frequency recommendations that are being applied out of context to different kinds of athletes. So, you know, as I think as the whole field grows, it's harder and harder to distinguish what applies to you specifically. And I think that's kind of been our goal. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it's uh, what what further kind of muddles that is people don't know what they want specifically. So they don't they don't know how to apply it if they don't really know what they want. And, you know, there has to be that you kind of have to have a like figure out what you want in different phases. Like, OK, I want to get bigger and, you know, I want to get more jacked and gain muscle. Like you kind of have to periodize what you're doing to some extent. Like yep. you can only mm-hmm. chase your, can't chase everything at once. Like when you're running right. for an ultra, you kind of do, but when like, let's say like when you're training for an ultra marathon and you also want to get your squat up this much, you're probably yeah. not also going to deadlift a ton. If like, that's the goal is just those right. two things. Like exactly. You, you triage everything and you say, what mm-hmm. can I put in kind of a holding pattern for the time being? And, you know, do just often enough to, you know, keep the motion fresh and whatever else, you know, as you say, you know, as I move on to the next thing, like, you know, there's still, you know, no bones about it. Like, you know, when I was doing a lot of my more specialized training, you know, I certainly lost strength. My, my biggest deadlift ever was, I mean, low sevens, you know, I was pulling 730, 735 when I, all I did was lift. And, you know, quite frankly, since I started this uh, concurrent training, I haven't touched that weight. Right. And, uh, you know, does that mean that the concurrent training didn't work well? You know, not necessarily. You know, certainly my deadlift has gone up and down. But there's, you know, for me physically realizing at this point with my limitations, there is no way to put in the work needed to get back to that deadlift while I had other objectives. You know, if my my only cardiovascular training objective was to, you know, not die of a heart attack, possibly. But, you know, I, I found that I love endurance sports. So, you know, I have to make that calculation and say, okay, you know, every time a year, I'm still going to be doing eight to ten hours of low intensity or some intensity cardio per week. A 750 deadlift is never going to be back on in on the table as long as I'm doing that. And you know, it's it's being being able to be kind of honest with yourself and saying, yeah, I want to do everything. You know, it sounds really cool. Let's do 50 things at once. But then saying, well, okay, hold on, like let's let's be realistic about these targets and let's find out what really matters to you. Yeah. And I think that that same philosophy applies to business is what's funny. So like, <laughs> I, I found myself just like, oh, OK, I'm going to be, you know, content generated where you're just trying to get as many views, as many views. And I'm like, well, that's not making me any money. And it's great if people are looking. Yep. But if I can't pay my bills, I can't pay my right. bills. So it's like you kind right. of have to, you know, like, that's something I did at the start of this year was, that, you know, I look and I'm like, OK, so where did the bulk of my income come? Oh, it came from coaching. What do I actually enjoy doing? How am I actually having the most impact on someone's life? It's like actually dealing with them Mm one-on-one. You you really know that person. So I'm like, okay, this, you know, going forward this, you know, next year, I'm going to focus primarily on that. Still try to grow everything because I like, you know, to give back, but it's the same thing. Like, okay, maybe one of the goals, like we almost hit a million views on starting strongman website last year in 2015. And I don't think we're going to hit it this year. But I'm like, if I was like, okay, I'm going to make it a goal. And I went, well, it's not going to really change anything if, yeah. you know, uh, extra 100,000 people look at stuff. But it's, yeah, exactly. it's cool for bragging rights, but it's, you know, it doesn't really change it. So, well, yeah. And, and the way I see that is especially for you. I mean, like, you know, if, if you can't pay the bills, you're going to end up not being able to support the sport. Right. No. And, you, you know, I. I, you know, I tell this to so many people and it's, you know, it's, it's funny. It's something that comes up a lot is, you know, people worry about like selling out and, you know, you do this for the love of the sport and so-and-so is all about their marketing and blah, blah, blah. And I think, you know, it's being able to support yourself doing this. If you really want to give back, you can't give back if you yourself have nothing to give. And, you know, that's one of the, one of the things that, you know, we're able to do and you're able to do is, you know, because, because we managed to make it, you know, something we can, we can do for a living, we're actually in a position where we can give back and we can provide great content and, you know, we can sponsor events and we can help grow the sport. So that's, I mean, it's, it, it, it's something that's almost seen as, you know, unpleasant by a lot of people, but it really like the, the net result is the, you know, the, the sport gets more, the sport gets more money, it gets more attention, it gets more fans, it introduces new people to it. So it's uh, kind of necessary. Yeah, ab- absolutely. But 
you know, people are going to say what they, they're going to say. It's a, they always do. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, so, uh, you know, it's just best to ignore that part. And you just, you got to think like, you know, like, you know, in your head, what your, your, your morals are and your, your agendas, people would like to say that, you know, myself or you or some other person must have, but as long as you know what it is and you're following that, you can't really worry yep. how it's interpreted by everyone. Yep. Oh just, yeah. It'll, it'll eat you alive. Oh yeah. Easily. And yep. <laughs> but so you, you talked about the system that you, you run a couple of times. And, uh, so mm. how is like, uh, and I want to talk about the benefits of adding a little bit extra, you know, conditioning, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, cardio, whatever you want to call it into the kind of guy who's like in that, they're not doing any, like that's the majority, right. you know, of power lifters, strong man, the, you know, the kind of most of the people that listen to this, uh, you know, they're like, Oh, I do event training, which, you know, is a yeah. very different threshold than, yeah. you know, some, it's not, this isn't really working. It's not the same thing. It's, it's a, it's, not. it's a, it's a short time domain. So you want to go over why that would be beneficial and, uh, how it's not the same as doing some, you know, longer distance cardio. Sure. Yeah. There are actually, there are two angles that I think it's worth discussing it from. And, um, the first one on the scientific side might be a little bit cumbersome, but I want to try to try to convey it in a way that speaks to people. Um, you gotta dumb it down enough for me. Yeah, well, so <laughs> so the thing is, like, there's a big difference. Like, all elevated heart rate is not created equal, right? You know, a lot of people think, okay, my heart rate is up. You know, I'm breathing hard. I'm sweating. I must be doing some kind of cardio. And it's it's not the same. The heart basically does whatever the body tells it to. You know, if, uh, if anxiety tells the heart rate to go up, it goes up. If cardiovascular demand causes it to go up, you know, lack of oxygen, it goes up. You know, if, whatever else, you know stimulants or you know cocaine tells it to go up it's going to go up so that doesn't mean that you're getting a cardiovascular like endurance stress when you lift heavy weights you know when you're doing uh you know even sets of 10 sets of 20 event work or anything like that the heart is pumping harder because basically the you know the there's obviously there's uh you know physical and mental arousal you know you're operating at a high level of intensity you've got hormones pumping your muscles are actually actively closing off the blood vessels, which is why you get a pump, right? So what the heart does is since very little blood is coming back, it starts pumping harder and faster to keep circulation in spite of the fact that your muscles are not when you circulate blood, right? Because that's, you know, basically if my legs are, you know, if I'm in the middle of a heavy squat, all that blood in my legs is staying put. So my heart's going to start pumping harder to keep it circulating everywhere else around the body. So my heart rate's going to go up. Does that mean it's cardio? No, absolutely not. Because the thing is, no more blood is getting back into my heart. Now, if I'm doing a run and blood is circulating just fine, then my heart starts pumping harder and more blood comes back into the heart, which means more oxygen comes back in. It's increasing the flow rate. To actually have your heart get healthier, you need more blood coming into the heart and expanding the intake side of the heart. And that doesn't happen in strength training. That doesn't happen in event training. You need a certain, you need a low level of intensity over time to get those adaptations. And that's, you know, the, you see people talk about preload and things like that. That's what it is, is if you don't have that low intensity work over time, you're not getting that full heart benefit from the increased heart rate. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I get, yeah. yeah. If, if yeah. you're pretty much just, you know, pound, if you're pounding away with weights, then you're, you're sending the blood flow to, you know, pretty much the wrong area. It's not circulating through the whole system. Yeah. Yeah. And your heart's, your heart's working really hard and it's pumping out as hard as it can, but nothing's coming back in or very little's coming back in as opposed to when you do cardio, it's a nice, smooth, high flowing, rapid transit, rapid blood exchange. And that's what gets the blood vessels elastic. You know, that's what improves oxygen carrying capacity. That's, that's what does all those other things. So the first thing I tell people is you need to do low intensity work to get that benefit. And then people say, well, what is the benefit? And, um, you know, you say, obviously from a health perspective, having a healthier heart is not a bad thing. You know, it's not dying. It, not dying is good. And, uh, you know, the thing is a lot of people do, you know, especially in strength sports, especially in strongman, um, do a lot of things, uh, <clears throat> you know, potentially aren't the healthiest, <laughs> aren't the healthiest. Right. <laughs> And, you know, the, my, my goal is to have people mitigate those risks. You're taking stimulants, you know, you're taking others that, you know, may <laughs> increase your blood pressure, things sure. like that. 
it's for the for health and longevity. You know, I've I've seen all these powerlifters who you know they have to you know cut their next meet short because they're having a fib issues and things like that, or you know they can't sleep because of heart palpitations and things like that. And you say, well, you know, what I'm trying to do is give you something you can do. It's going to take an hour out of your week, but it's going to potentially extend your career. It's going to extend your life. It's going to extend your career. That moment when your doctor looks at you and says, look, if you keep doing this, you're going to die. I had that moment. (laughs) Did you? Oh, yeah. After the Arnold in 2014, you know, I I wasn't working at my old job. I was walking, you know, mile, like, you know, just a steady state. I, you know, I worked in agriculture. So you're walking fields, you know, pretty much all day. So I, I was getting that in. And then, you know, leading up to the Arnold, you know, you're prepping for a meet. So that, that's how things are. And yeah, my, my blood pressure, my every, every thing was just so off that they looked at, they're like, dude, like how, it's, it's funny when, uh, <laughs> when doctors, they're not endocrinologists. So they're like, how do you look like this? And your health is like this, like, they, 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 you know what I mean? So yep. <laughs> the people don't really realize that, you know, just because someone, you know, looks like a superhero doesn't necessarily mean they're the healthiest person. It could always be yep. the opposite, especially when you're yep. not being smart about it. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I drastically changed my lifestyle at that point. Yep. But, yep. You know, I wasn't doing yep. any sort of cardio or, at that, yeah. or anything. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's cheap and easy insurance, you know, and, and some people still say, well, you know what, I've, I've only got another year or two that I'm going to push this as hard as I can, you know, uh, I'll, I'll worry about my health after that. And, yeah. you know, a lot of athletes, especially elite athletes in any sport, make that, make that choice. Sure. And that's fair. You know, it's anything at a high level is not good for you. High level cycling, high level marathon running, high level powerlifting, high level weightlifting. At any point there, there are certain costs to it that you just accept that come with being an elite athlete. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, that's just, that's part and parcel. This is not the healthiest lifestyle, but I've only got to do it. What the heck? I mean, you know, hell, look at look at football players and what happens to them. Then again, they're getting paid millions of dollars. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, my my whole thing then is, well, what the 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 point of, you know, some low intensity cardiovascular activity is, first of all, it doesn't take away from the rest of your training. You know, a, a short incline walk every day or every other day is not going to hurt your performance in the gym. I mean, it's it is such different pathways. It is such a different challenge on the body, different systems, everything else that it's not it, there's no deleterious effect all you have to do is make a little bit of time for it the other thing is it can actually have some benefits because you know the the thing i tell people and you know I, one of my one of my clients is a very good uh, australian powerlifter he he mentioned that the first thing he ever noticed was that he could put his knee wraps on without being out of breath little things like that like realizing that you can you know especially especially event training where all you're doing is like you feel like you're moving stuff back and forth just to get the damn thing set up every time oh yeah is you say well you know what if what if i can actually get to the work set and feel fresher not feel so tired and what if i know i can you know do a couple more runs or do a couple more sets or do a couple more rounds work on technique and not be so gassed out that i've got to cut it short so the whole idea is you do a little bit more work on the cardiovascular side, but that lets you put in more quality work. And that's the idea is you say, look, it's going to take a little bit of extra dedication to do some of this cardio, but your event training is going to be better. You're going to be less fatigued going into your work sets. You're going to recover faster. You know, you're, when you get to competition time, you're going to have done 20 to 30 percent more productive work than the person standing next to you. That's that's how you succeed. Yeah, it's just going to it's going to increase your work capacity, you know, a ton. I know for me even just, you know, since I've started to do more just nothing hard at all, just a, just a little bit here and there. It's just it's helped tremendously. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, let's take that that Arnold for example. I performed horribly. It was the worst contest I've ever had. I was unhealthy. Yeah. You, yeah. It, especially something, you know, a sport as dynamic, uh, you know, and like there's a, a a strong man, you know, compared to something like powerlifting, you can't really compete um being you know that out of shape really yeah it just just doesn't work but it's going to increase your work capacity and it's it's just actor of recovery it's the same reason why you know some people you know they go the pharmaceutical kind of way to be able to do more work you know Mm -hmm. you could just go for a walk and kind of kind of accomplish the same thing not really but you know, in, in a way. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the other thing, and this is something I, I, you know, I came across about two years ago is, you know, a lot of people talk about recovery 
and how important it is to manage recovery. And, you know, everything, everything with training is kind of a fixed quantity that you can train. You know, your, your muscle strength is a fixed quantity, but you can improve it, right? Your, your muscle endurance is a fixed quantity, but you can improve it. Recovery is a fixed quantity, but you can improve it. There's also the side of like mental and neurological recovery that I think a lot of people don't talk about enough. You know, you see athletes getting overtrained and burned out and losing motivation. That comes and goes. And I think a lot of people don't track the, the kind of mental side enough. What I've found is that, um, you know, a lot of the lower intensity cardiovascular work, even something as simple as going for a walk in the woods, it is in terms of mental recovery, it's actually a benefit. It actually accelerates that sort of mental reset and mental recovery from high intensity work in our athletes. So if used intelligently, you know, a lot of that kind of work can actually help alleviate um, you know, alleviate some of the mental burnout that comes along with heavy event training and, you know, slamming weights constantly and, you know, feeling beat up. And, you know, that makes it actually a net benefit. You tell people, look, you know, here, I can give you a program where it's going to take you an extra hour and a half per week, which, you know, for a lot of people is already, you don't have much time, but benefits are going to be your, you know, your, your event training is going to be able to be a little more intense you know, you're going to have a much easier time loading and unloading your weights. You're going to be able to do more work, recover faster, and you're not going to feel so mentally fried all the time. You're going to be able to tune out and, you know, feel like you can do your hard work harder and your easy work easier. You say, well, that's, that's kind of a no brainer. And, um, you know, that's something that, uh, that's something I think is finally getting a little more attention as people are paying attention to the fact that athletes aren't machines. Um, you know, we're all, we're all, you know, kind of squishy humans. And, you know, sometimes we need to really think about the fact that the, uh, the, the brain needs its chance to kind of reset, recover and uh, get back on the right track. But what if I hate running? <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's better. what it all comes down to, right? Like, yeah. oh, that, that sounds great, but I just really hate that. So, and I think some, is it just what gets lost there is that, you know, when, it's like if you try to introduce someone to strength training and they're uh, well and they're already a good endurance athlete, they're going to have to start slow yeah. and not very much and the opposite yeah. applies and you know if you're already this really strong guy, you don't want to no one likes to do something they're bad at. Like this no, is a part no. of the training. So if you go out there and I remember like man, like the first time I got like I'm going to go run a mile and I hadn't done anything and like I'm not even like the biggest guy or anything but it was yeah, just like it, feels terrible. Oh, it was horrible. And then yeah, it and slowly it, gets easier but like I also, you know, you, you have to build up slow. So what's kind of the progression or, you know, a simple way to start out if someone just well, wanted to add a little bit of this? The, the first thing I tell people is find something you enjoy doing. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, you Seriously. don't have to run. You know, you can, you can rock, you can go hike. You know, there's a lot of guys will say, well, you know, I, mean, I don't mind putting on a 30 pound pack and going for a walk in the woods. Like, and that actually, you know, you find a, a hilly course, a hilly trail up and down hills. That's actually a lot of work. Yep. Um, Ride a bike. Get a fat bike. If you've ever seen a fat bike, those things are great. You know, they'll they'll hold up to 300 pounds on them. Um, you know, which may still eliminate some of <laughs> some of your listeners. Yeah. But um, it's just it's a lot of fun. You know, you go out and you know you kind of tool around and you take joy in the fact that you know your legs are probably so damn strong that you can smoke anybody in the first hundred meters. And um, it's enjoyable. You know, you can get out on a trail. You can go on a beach. You can do that. Uh, you know, go, get a rower, go, you know, the most important thing for me is people find something that they actually don't mind doing. And that's, you know, sometimes that takes getting off the treadmill, getting out of the gym, finding something else because, you know, strength athletes especially can actually find that they're exceptionally good at some things, you know, get, get on a C2 rower and try to bang out a fast hundred meters. If you're a strength athlete, you will crush it. Yeah, like Brian and Shaw. That can, yeah, exactly. I mean, practically breaking the machine. That can be really <laughs> satisfying. And, you know, find, so find some part of the, the cardio and conditioning that you actually enjoy doing and you feel like you've got a talent at. And then branch out from there. You know, because nobody likes to feel like they're just going out there and, they're you know, they're sucking ass all the time. But if you can say, look, you know, I'm going to get good at rowing. I know I can beat anybody in the 100 meters, so I'm going to keep that as a goal. And then I'm going to do some of the base building work that I'm not so good at but my sessions aren't always going to be frustrating. You know, I'm going to sure. start out with a good hundred meter sprint. I'm going to, you know, have that PR to work towards. And then, you know, I don't mind putting in 20, 30 minutes of just easy rowing after that. So, yeah, so that, that's, that's, like I said, that, that's the first thing always is, is find something that you feel like, Hey, you know, I'm not only am I decent at this, but I actually enjoy this and want to progress at this. 
Yeah, and another way that it can help too is if uh, you know you happen to have a significant other and and she enjoys doing something. Yep. To, to you know or vice or he to vice like okay i'm actually gonna do this with you like that's yep. that goes a long way usually um, helpful. or you, you can be like me and have a million dogs who if i don't take them for a walk or a run drive me insane at night so you know that, that, works that is pretty well <laughs> that is probably the best argument if any uh, any of your listeners out there ever like needed an excuse to get a dog have this be it because you know taking a dog out for a, a mile or two walk every day and playing with them that's perfect it's yeah and you know if your dog is as poorly behaved as most people's it's kind of like a combination sled pull and you know everything <laughs> everything else yeah they, they keep looking at me this whole interview because it's like uh you know about four o'clock or so and usually i take them after i train around three ish so yep. they're like hey are... it, it's getting dark you know daylight savings time just ended so yeah <laughs> they... yeah mine are racing around in circles over there as well yeah i, I found if i if i'm here by myself and I close the, you know, I close the office door. It does more harm than just letting them kind of roam in and out. And interrupt. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, go, it's, go adopt a dog. <laughs> go adopt the dog. And you know, that does a, a good thing for the, uh, the local ASPCA anyway. Sure. And yeah. Everyone, everyone adopt. Don't, don't get from a breeder adopt. Yeah. But, get, um, get a pony while you're at it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you're kind of famous with that now. I know. It's like, <laughs> Out of all the things I ever tried to do in my life, the, the, like that video is going to, I think it's getting like close to like 500,000 views or something. So That's insane. Well, you know, my most popular video is me drinking beer while I deadlift. So, you know, we're, sure. we're all becoming famous for the things we don't necessarily yeah, want. I know. It's funny. But yeah, you know, it's, it, there's, there's actually something to be said for that though. Even just watching dogs play. Like, you remember when you were younger and the idea of going for a bike ride or going out and running and doing anything else, like that was play. That was supposed to be fun. Well, you had to. Else you yeah, didn't go to, anywhere. Yeah, and it's, now it's just become such a chore. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the, the other way to think about it is like this stuff's supposed to be fun, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, go go play in the woods. I, you know, I don't, I don't care. Go, you know, just be outside for an hour or two. It's, it's good for you. You know, it's uh, – you know, I think a lot of people um, – you know, I've, I've gotten away from that. Just when you look at a lot of even commercial gyms, just look at the wall-to-wall -wall treadmills and stair climbers, and it looks like pure misery. You know, I'll tell people, just get outside. You know, get get outside. It's good for your mind. It's good for your body. It's good for your heart. And it will make you a better athlete for a bunch of reasons. You know, that's, that's you know, I, I, I firmly believe that, and it's been borne out again and again. So Absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. It's uh, If you can... I, I find if you can do any of the activities outside, it's better. Plus, plus you get a tan at the same time or, you know, it's just, right. it's active right. tanning, you know, it's, it's just, usually, which is so important. <laughs> it is <laughs> how, you know, I, I don't have a tan anymore cause I'm just working, you know, on my computer yeah. all day. So About that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously, I was really, the glare I get is from the screen <laughs> in my eyes, but you know, there was a point where I actually go outside. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, um, right. So, you know, and of course, you know, we went over it. I should have mentioned earlier that you can get all of this information and a lot more and you don't have to keep repeating yourself that they buy the hybrid hybrid athlete book on uh, yep. that's available on JTS strength. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. And uh, you guys I want to kind of go into what, you know, so you divert, you kind of went more general. You have more, uh, you know, specialized coaches that, you know, and what I find is being, you know, a, a uh, CHP coach is helpful. It's just, you know, you got to learn from each other so much. Like, yeah. even if you didn't, even if I didn't get one client or anything, that's just a huge benefit right there. Um, but so you have that, it's, like what else is, what's, what else is happening with complete human performance? You know, cause we're closing out 2016, you know, 2017 starting up. What, what's, yep. what, what's going forward? What's going on with it? Well, so, you know, obviously we're, you know, we're looking to, um, you know, kind of grow and expand specific areas. You know, I think at this point we have, we've got a lot of coaches in each area who are just, you know, so damn good that we're, we're going to make an effort to, you know, for example, we've got a great powerlifting team and we're going to make an effort to, you know, have them, have them be able to go out and speak to other powerlifters as powerlifters. Um, you know, as people who, you know, speak their language fluently, uh, but also be able to talk to them about some of what we do about conditioning, uh, you know, things like that. Um, you know, same thing with triathlon. And then probably starting, you know, beginning of the year, we're going to do the same thing with strongmen where we basically say, look, you know, we've got 
we've got an entire division of our company that eat, breathes, lives your sport and are devoted to finding ways to improve your sport using this basic methodology. And these are people who've been in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. Cause you know, the, the, the thing we think is so important is we don't want to, we don't want to be outsiders looking in and telling people what to do, having never been there ourselves. So we made a real effort to say, okay, whatever we're going to train people, whatever we're going to teach people, we want to make sure that we've got a voice on the team who's been there personally and who's coached that personally. And, um, you know, moving into next year, that's going to be a, a big thing that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to say, you know, we're, like I said, powerlifting, uh, triathlon, ultramarathon, strongman, CrossFit, and even our military prep. We're, we're going to be bringing on people who can make each one into a cohesive enough group that we say, look, we, we understand everything that you want to do. We know how to make you as good as you want to be. You know, that's let us show how this whole philosophy can make you a better athlete and a healthier athlete. Yeah. So that's the big thing. Just we're also, yeah. Go ahead. You're, you're also what? No, we're we're also going to be traveling a hell of a lot too. Yeah, you got a, you got a couple seminars coming up. It's, it seems yeah. like a lot yeah. of book. So uh, you know, look for a you know complete human performance uh, seminar somewhere near you. That'll all be up on uh, completehumanperformance.com, Facebook, yep. all of those places. All usual. Yeah, even even have a, a podcast if anyone's listening to this. There's the Complete Human Performance Radio, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to get on that as well because <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been on my own podcast, well, my own company's own podcast. Sure. It's cool though. Like we're we're trying to you know again same sort of thing. Make sure that we get a bunch of different types of voices on there. Um, you know, because I, I think what I love about being in this position, being with this company so much, is it's opening a lot of people's eyes to you know all the the different challenges of different sports. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of funny even seeing the discussions on, you know, on, on my social media will be that people who are lifelong cyclists are speaking to people who are lifelong powerlifters and each one, there are so many similarities, so many similarities in competitive sure. drive and mindset and everything else. And they all learn from each other. And that's just the most gratifying thing on earth to see people who don't even look like the same species having a conversation with each other about some of the same challenges in their sport and their passion and learning from each other and saying, yeah, you know, we, you know, Oh yeah. You know, you have this issue. Yeah. I have this issue too. Yeah. Oh, you know, what do you do for it? And, um, you know, these are people who, you know, you think would probably never have any interaction to begin with. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's been kind of the coolest thing about this whole movement really. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask you quickly before I'll let you go. What it sounds like your dogs are terrorizing your house. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. hardwood floors and loud bones. I just it's my life right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I understand that completely. But um, so I know that you had some interest at some point in doing a strongman contest. Mm-hmm. I, I know you bought like some stone sleeves from me and stuff, and then you know. Yep. It, but, so what was the uh, what made you have the interest in it and what happened and did you ever plan on doing one in the future? I actually do next year. I think, um, you know, the hardest thing for me is honestly been, especially with travel schedules is finding the time. And, you know, with, with strongman, there's such a, you know, technique component to it. And, you know, I, the hardest thing for me has been basically saying, okay, you know, this is something I want to do. I want to do it well. And of course everyone says, look, just get out there and just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think what, what happened to me this year especially was I ended up with about a month of solid travel right before the show I was supposed to do. Sure. So it was the kind of thing where I was just detrained. You know, I was looking at the events and going, you know, I haven't even a chance to practice that because I procrastinated. I said, oh, I'll do this. You know, I'll start I'll start looking at this next year or next week and, you know, trying this next week and that next week. And, um, you know, I realized I just needed to be a lot more realistic with when I picked events. And, um, you know, there's still an interest, you know, and I think it's, it's, it's such a cool, it's such a cool sport. Um, you know, even just the event training I've done, it is a lot of fun. Um, you know, and I think, uh, I'll probably, (laughs) I'll probably be talking to you about it. Um, you know, I think it's also one of those things where it's important to, to work with a coach who actually knows, who can actually back you down and, and, and have you actually kind of check your ego a little bit. Because, you know, here I am thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm strong. I've got great endurance. I should kick butt at this and finding out that, you know, I, <laughs> don't don't underestimate it. So, you know, I, I think um, I think for next year I've got to, you know, get this travel schedule planned out and actually find some time when I can, you know, go go train with people who know what they're doing 
And, uh, you know, really, if I want to get into the sport, not not half ass it and, uh, you know, show a lack of respect to it, but really say, OK, you know, this is this is something I want to be good at. So I'm, I'm going to put in the time and actually learn how to do it. right. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, it's a showman's. Yeah, you do have a good base, obviously, for it. You know, you you've lifted some weights, you've done some endurance stuff and that's going to translate. But anytime you have a new, you try to apply your base to a new skill, there's acquisition there, which, mm-hmm. which, you know, it, it's always hard. And I always say that there's like a six, it takes like six months for your body just to get used to it. And yeah. there's, you know, there's a very, there's a huge variety of events. Um, yeah. no matter what you could be, it, you're still going to make mistakes the first couple of times, but yeah, it's just, there's, you know, there's a, you know, you're, you're smart enough to kind of understand that there's some basic movements to how a strongman shows structured, but then there's, there could be a thousand variate variants yeah. within that. So yeah. it makes it unique. It's a, it's a little harder than, you know, like, Oh, I want to do a weightlifting meet. Okay. I need to learn how to do you know, this. Exactly what you're gonna do. You got to do these two things. Yep. There's yep. With, with a lot of those, you know, if you peak right, you know exactly how you're going to perform the day of, Yeah. you know, there, there's just so fewer variables, you know, and it's, it's funny because with, with strongman and, you know, like I discovered, like, you know, this is, a, this is a lesson I think I keep learning myself over and over and over again. If you have a solid athletic background, especially a solid, well-rounded athletic background, it is so easy to hide your mistakes oh, yeah. through brute, through sheer athleticism. You say, you know, I can, I can lift a lot of weight over my head. You can lift it absolutely wrong. And, you know, it's, you think somebody, you know, somebody my size should be able to do X amount on a log press and it looks tremendously easy, but then suddenly I'm, you know, getting stuck at 75% of what I probably should. And that's because, you know, I've been, been able to do this with absolutely horrible technique, haven't had to learn a damn thing and have just brute forced my way through it. And all I'm doing is ingraining bad habits. And, you know, again, this is, this is why I think so many more people need to work with coaches because, you know, myself included, like I said, half the lessons I give people are my own stupidity. But, um, you know, having somebody be like, look, you're strong, you're fast, you're everything else, but you're terrible at this and you don't know what you're doing. Drop the damn weight, lift your elbows, you know, put your, <laughs> do, do all the stuff from stage one and actually learn what the heck you're supposed to do before you start throwing on weight and thinking that, you know, you're going to go change the world with your performance at your next show. Yeah, there's, it, it almost makes it worse. It's funny. That's how I met, um, uh, our our good friend Jacob Sipkin, um, yep. a couple of years ago is I always trained at my house and I lived about 30 minutes from his old gym CrossFit Monterey. And I was like, uh, I think I should know how to like snatch or like for whatever, for no, I don't know what my reasoning behind it was. It was just like, people like, you should know how to do this. I'm like, okay, I sh- I'm going to go there. And I did, I think I did there. He watched me do it for like one session and I, I did the, the ugliest thing you know, any, just about anyone's ever seen. And he went, do you want to compete in weightlifting? I'm like, no. And he's like, then don't do this again. (laughs) He's like, go do something else. Like go, go press a log. Like there's no point. It's going to, I'm, you're going to have to, you know, you're already deadlifting, you know, three plus times, you know, over 600 pounds at under 200 pounds. And so you're able to throw 200 pounds, like just up over your head you're going to have to focus way too much on this and it's going to take away from that, which is something exactly. there is the law of specificity that uh, Absolutely. you have to follow in sports. So Absolutely. You know, yeah. That's, the, that's why part of your job as a coach, I guess is almost expectation management more than anything else. Yeah. And that's, you know, that again, that's, you know, that, that even goes back to, you know, what we were just talking about, like, you know, people going from, you know, accomplished strength athletes suddenly, you know, they don't, they don't want to run because they don't want to suck at it. And that's why it's, you know, it, it's dealing with that almost hit to the ego where, you know, you're, you, you've been a grandmaster in something and now suddenly you're a white belt in something else. That is not easy to do, yeah. um, especially when you think it's something that's close enough that there should be overlap. So it, it, it takes a lot of, uh, it, it takes a lot of steps back. Yeah. And, you know, having a good coach that like in, in my case, I was like, Hey, Jacob, I'm going to work with you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, just, just don't do this. That was the best advice that someone could give me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it, it's funny because that's that's actually something we get into a lot because a lot of people come to us and they go, oh, yeah, you know, I want to do a, you know, they're a power lift. They say, oh, I want to do a 5K. Oh, it's fun. I want to do a triathlon. I want to do an ultra marathon. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, yeah, anyone can do yeah. it. Like, no, stop. <laughs> like, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get hurt. You've got to respect the sport. Yep. You've got to want to start from square one. Don't sign up for a 50 miler when you haven't done a 10K. Like, stop. You know, you're 
all that's going to do is lead to frustration. Sometimes telling people, no, you can't do this or you can't do this yet is the best thing and kindest thing you can do for them. Yeah, I have the same conversation when, um, you know, like I'll have clients that they either want to cut a weight class for this one specific meat. Uh, and I, you know, I always ask them like, okay, so you are 250 pounds. You know, I'm like, what is, what goal, what weight class do you want to see yourself in five years? Like, what is your goal overall? Oh. And they're like, well, no, I want to be a heavyweight pro. And I'm like, then why are you going to, you're, you're shortchanging yourself for this one thing, right. like to, right. win, to win some local show, it makes no sense. Or right. like, oh, I want to go do this contest. I'm like, so what's the point? What, what is your goal for the year? I want to, you know, I want to place top 10 at nationals and qualify for the Arnold. I'm like, so why are you going to compete? three weeks before it like but. right yeah it's um it's 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 hard because i think there's a lot of people have a self-imposed pressure because they want to perform now mm -hmm. and they want to have something they can talk about and they want to have something that they can you know maybe not brag about but something where you know because oh, i think a lot of people train and want to feel like there's some end point to it they want to feel like oh you know yeah I've, I've been training this whole time and hey i just did an event and you know hey here's how i did <laughs> Um, you know, because the, the idea of just quietly sitting back and working for a while and not having anything to quote unquote show for it is, is tough. And, yeah, um, the, the, you know. the competing is the fun part, like, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's, that's the reward. And, 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 and we all are, um, you know, we're all, kind, it's kind of like you're an exhibitionist in a way you want to be noticed. You want attention. Yeah. Like if you yeah. didn't, you wouldn't, you know, you know, you wouldn't make like these post on Facebook that's going to drum up a bunch of debate, you know, like, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. You're like, Oh, look at all these yeah. people are doing this. Like, or you wouldn't, yeah. you know, you wouldn't post a, you know, I wouldn't post a video on Instagram of, you know, lifting when I did a, a deadlift, I would have just done it. But yeah. you know, it's just, it's okay to say you want attention as well, but yeah, that can, absolutely. it can be a detriment at some point as well. You know, and, and that's, <laughs> that's actually part of, you know, going back to like last year and why I ended up not doing the show. That was actually a big part of it as well, because, you know, there's, if you want to learn something new, you want to, you know, really get into something, you have to be willing to devote a lot of time to it. And, you know, you, I think for me at that point, you know, I had what, 80, 80 clients of my own. Yeah. And, you know, here I am, I've got 80 clients. That's 80 people who all have goals that I have to think about. The 80 people who have, you know, whether this is their hobby or this is a career move or something else, 80 people that I have to focus on and I need to be thinking about them. And, you know, when it came to my own training, it was hard to just motivate myself to go downstairs to the garage gym and pick up a bar, you know, because it's you spend so much time putting yourself in in their shoes and, you know, trying to empathize and everything else that, um, yeah, you your your own, you know, your own demonstrations and everything else just suddenly they just they, they just don't seem to matter. You just don't have much motivation for them anymore. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm sure you felt this too a little bit. It's a, it's a, str it's a strange feeling. Like I, I remember, man, it, yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, you know, people ask me again if I'm going to compete. And, you know, cause I, of course, I tried last December and I tried to half ass it last December. Like, oh, I could just show up and I tore my bicep. Yeah. Like I didn't give yep. it or there's, that's what happened. And I went, OK, I can't half ass. I can't just do something for fun. That's just not how it works. And, yep. and you're not respecting um, the sport to some degree. Mm -hmm. So and I really don't like getting hurt and having to have surgery like that's not yeah. fun. So I'm like, I'm yep. going to try to avoid that going forward. But, yeah, it's a it's a weird thing. Cause like for that training cycle, like I remember when I used to train and I didn't have, I wasn't coaching or maybe I had like five clients or something. Uh, all I cared about was what? the training that, to do that competition. And yes. then even yep. like my, my job, I got fired from everything that like, there's a reason I got fired for it. It wasn't yeah. all, it wasn't all the employer's fault. They're right to some extent. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was more devoted to this thing, you know, was, yeah. it's just, that's how it goes. So when you, it, it's hard to be in that position where then, you know, you're in charge of this many more people. It's like, how do you get back to that? That's a, or, it, it, or should you, or is it just an evolution of yeah. like, this is what I do now? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, you see when, you see when athletes have kids, it's, you know, back right. in 2012, I, I did my first Ironman and my goal for my next one, my first Ironman was like, it was terrible. It was like 14 hours, something. My goal for the next year is I said, look, I've got the skill in me. I've got the speed and everything else to do an 11 hour or better. I was on track for that until I got a freaking crash. But that was all I could think about that year. Yeah. I would eat 
sleep, breathe. I would think about my workout four days ahead of time. You know, you know, everything was planned out and, you know, you're planning out your gear and you're planning out what you're doing two months from now. And, you know, there's all this buildup and excitement. And now I'm, you know, I'm lucky to think about my workout until five minutes before I walk downstairs. Like that's, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm halfway through my, my second warmup second. Well, what am I doing again today? Yeah. So it's, again, it's, you know, your, your priorities change and you've got to, you've, you've got to be willing to, you know, strike when it's motivated and, you know, be realistic about it. Be realistic with yourself. Yeah, and just be fine, you know, to... And you got to settle at some point, like, okay, this is, like... Like, even how we're saying, uh, you know, kind of periodizing what your goals for your training are. Like, sometimes your, your life goals, like, okay, this period of time, I'm going to be focused on building up my client base. That's the number one yep. thing that I'm training, you know, third or... You know, and you got you to gotta kind of you got to put things on priority and you, you can't do everything yep. all at once. It's just, yep. everything kind of falls apart then, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean like, you know, anybody, you know, anybody listening has, you know, jobs, kids, everything else. And sometimes, you know, feels like they're struggling with their training. It's, that's not something to beat yourself up over. You know, we, we've all got goals. I think the most important thing for people to remember is that, you know, there's, it's, it's a much, much longer longer term proposition than I think we give it credit for. And that's one of the reasons why I say health is so important because, you know, there's this tendency, oh, I've got to do it this year. You know, I've, I've got to compete this year and, you know, they'll try to force it. And, you know, my, my whole thing is, you know, do something else this year, you know, stay healthy, you know, focus on your family, focus on whatever else. When the time is right, you'll be able to come back and attack it in a way you never thought you could. Absolutely. And that, that is, it's so important. And that's why it's, you know, it, it's, it's a hard thing to convey. Because, you know, most of us get into these sports because we're competitive people or we like achievement. And uh, being able to put that on hold for a while for almost selfless purposes is not easy. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Well, I could talk to you all day about different yeah. things. And, you know, we could just go back and forth about it. But, you know, you're, you're a busy guy. Uh, you know, I got stuff to do. We all got stuff to do. I'll let yep. you go. I think that's a good place to end it. Um, Perfect. If anyone wants, you know, to... Learn more. CompleteHumanPerformance.com is the best way to go. You're probably already following Alex on Facebook, (laughs) most likely. My daily snark. Yeah, you can, you can, (laughs) you can, you can tell him how stupid he is. There, you know, that's fun. Or or everybody does. You can do what I do, and I just add in like what I think about it. So I'm like, oh, then these people are gonna start following me. That's what I do. But (laughs) just don't, don't PM me, please. I have them turned off. Yeah, no Facebook (laughs) messages. (laughs) <laughs> but, I get so much hate mail in there when I don't respond to people. Oh, anyway, oh yeah, I bet. why haven't you responded? Yep. All right, man. I want to. Well, yeah, I I want to I want to try to do that myself. I I think about it all the time. That I I probably think about how you you don't have your Facebook messages turned on, like yeah. almost every time I check my Facebook messages. <laughs> but it was great talking to you. CompleteHumanPerformance.com. Tons of seminars coming up. Uh, stay tuned. All of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, your book on JTS strength, juggernaut, JTS strength.com, juggernaut training systems, hybrid athlete has a ton of good information in there. And then there's a certification course as well, which if you want a little bit more, uh, in-depth knowledge on that. So appreciate you, you taking it. the time and, uh, you have yeah, a good night. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Take care.